God used circumstances to prune us. Because of circumstances, we tend to seek help depending on how our faith operates and where our faith dwells. God used circumstances to sharpen us. He uses circumstances to lead us where we want, where he wants us to go. God will use circumstances to prune you, to test you, to try you. God will use circumstances to foster his purpose. Let me teach you something very briefly. Are you there? Circumstances to prune. God used circumstances to prune us. Are you there? Because of circumstances, we tend to seek help depending on how our faith operates and where our faith dwells. Are you there? If you have faith in God, obviously you, all your circumstances will draw you closer to Him. If you have faith in witchcrafts, all circumstances will draw you closer to Him. God used circumstances to sharpen us. He uses circumstances to lead us where we want, where he wants us to go. God will use circumstances to prune you, to test you, to try you. God will use circumstances to foster his purpose. The same way the evil one will also try to use your circumstances to lead you where he wants to lead you to. So be careful of your circumstances. Define your circumstances real well. Study your circumstances real well. Don't rush and do things that will injure you because of circumstances. Are you there? When Christ fasted for 40 days, he was hungry. The enemy came and whispered to him and said, Hey, why don't you change these stones into bread? The circumstance was he was hungry. So the enemy wanted to use that to cause him to rebel against the Most High God. When Christ was going to begin ministry, the circumstances where that is going to start serving. Where from? How? With who? We have so many questions. How do I start? I'm not trained in a form of understanding of the world. Will they understand me? Let me go to the synagogue, the church and sit and see if they will really work with me. So he went there and they gave him a scroll. Circumstance dictated that he was supposed to start in the Pharisees' dreams. When the Pharisees, because by then, they're the ones that had the crowds and the ones that were holding the mantle Though they were mishandling it, we went and told them the spirit of the Lord is upon me to set the captives free. And they said, You have spoken real well. Whose son is it? They began inquiring, Whose son is it? <laughs> Are you there? So, circumstances lead us to somewhere, to something, to somehow, to somehow. Are you there? But the focus in your faith matters a lot. Or else you'll be drifted and be taken off the vine. 
And that will be the end of you. Abraham, our forefather, was childless. He was 75 years old by then. When the Most High God met him. He says, hey, leave your people and go, go, go away from this place. I didn't tell him where to go. And told him, I'll make you a father of nations. This was a man who was childless. He, he, he would have thought in him, if this is a true God, doesn't he know that my wife is barren? Can't you see my age? I'm now 75. I hey, for him, he had even decided Eliza, Eliza will be the will be the, the, the heir. Circumstance had caused him to, to even make a decision of whom he should groom to be his heir. Here comes God. Says Abraham, leave your people. Sounded madness. And I go where? You just go. The mind moves, finds hostile people. He waited for 20 years. At 90, God comes back. Abraham, <laughs> I'm going to make a father of nations. Ah, my wife is too old now. You told me 20 years ago. Now you come back. But Abraham kept his faith. God was just testing his faith, trust, hope, patience, love to see that this man really loved me. If I make a small delay, until he said, mm, this God was not true, and go back where he came from. Abraham never went back. He continued following what he had God saying, despite of all the dictates of the bad circumstances. He went to Canaan, he was mistreated. He dug wells that could chase him from what he has dug, facing hostile guys and people. But he never went back because he believed God had told him so. I hey, his wife was impatient. Say, man, I'm now too old. My housemaid can pray all over mother conceiving. So Abraham said, okay. He didn't argue. Men don't argue in that thing. No things. When it comes, daddy says. <laughs> they don't argue. <laughs> I hear it. Abraham never argued. He said, okay. He got the child. I hear it. But God kept his promise. And Abraham kept hoping. That one day, this God will fulfill what you're saying. Are you there? Let's go in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. Genesis chapter 15, from verse 1 to 2. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Go, go up to four. Uh -huh. Go up to verse four. Then, then Abraham said, Look, you have given me an offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body 
shall be your head. Yes. Are you there? He told him, man, don't worry. Elijah shall not be your head, but somebody will come out of your body. So Abraham had already made a decision based on circumstances. But when he heard the word of God, he changed his mind. Waited on the Lord. As the Lord purposes in you, please wait on him. Don't change your mind. When you read the scripture here, you will realize God was focusing on the purpose he has in Abraham. But Abraham was focusing on his circumstances. Abraham, I'll make you a father of nations. Ah, Lord, I got no child. God has a purpose in him. Make him a father. But he had no child. God has a purpose in you. Study your circumstances really well. You realize that in this circumstance, there is a purpose of God. Are you there? Hannah was a, considered a barren woman. She, everybody looked at her, she, she's barren. She despised and rejected and dejected. So she always cried. She cried night and day. But when she remembered that her circumstance has a purpose of God in it, she used the same circumstance to promise God, Lord, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. God said, now you've talked. In your circumstance, I have a purpose. And out of that, she got a son. And through, she gave him back to the church. Gave him back to God. And this guy became a great prophet. And a king as well. So the answer of the entire Israel was in a barren woman. Look at your circumstance carefully and stop grumbling. Look at he who formed in your mother's womb and ask him and say, Hey Lord, what is this that I'm facing? What's your will in it? What's your purpose in it? God will answer you. And that will be the beginning of his glory in your life. Are you there? God loves you. Don't think he's not watching over you. Everything that's going on in your life, he knows. He knows really well. But he's looking at you. Do you trust me? Is your hope in me? Do you love me? He's looking at that. Where is your faith? When you have the answer for that, you will see his hand. Are you there? Your circumstances carry the glory of God. Your circumstances carry your purpose from God. Don't look at things as if they are not working out and glorify the evil one. No. In it all, look at the most high God. Study the story of Job real well. 
study the story of all the great men, you will see that in their circumstances, God had a hand in it. Are you there? Samson was a man born of a holy woman. He comes and tells Manoah, let your wife not take any wine. Because it's give birth to a holy child. It was like it's going to give birth to an angel. Here comes a guy, a switch line. Are you there? What next? Begin jumping with the women. There are some sons. There are some sons. Oh, a holy boy is. <laughs> <laughs> this was a holy boy <laughs> who went to Philistine and got a prostitute. Began fighting for women. God demonstrated that one was to cause him to develop some envy. But he, was, he would be self centered. So instead of judging the Israelites real well, was busy looking for women and whatever. God used the same circumstances to fulfill what he wanted. That when Samson had betrayed himself in his deepest weakness, he remembered God when he had no eyes and said, Lord, give me one more chance. Strengthen me. In that, God used Samson to destroy the leaders of the first times. He pushed the building and it collapsed. Whenever they could attack him, he could fight so badly. So, in all situations of Samson, God had a hand in it. And fulfilled his purpose to save the Israelites by killing the leaders of the Philistines. In one show, destroyed them all. Are you there? So be careful. Don't move in for evil. But study your circumstances real well. And ask yourself a question. Is God in it? Or is the devil taking over? So that question will lead you to step into prayer. What's the meaning of prayer? People think prayer is to say, la 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 the humanity connecting to divinity is turning the gap between humanity and divinity. That's what prayer means. It's turning the gap between humanity and divinity. So you look into your circumstances and connect the humanity to the divinity in prayer. Connect your circumstances, the spiritual rings, and find out where it is taking you. But if you don't do that, the enemy may take advantage of you and drive you to a pit of hell. In trouble. Are you there? Prayer is simply standing the gap between divinity and humanity. Are you there? Then you speak words in a spiritual ring. Are you there? You speak words to fill your spiritual ring, to empower your spirituality, 
and take over big time. Are you there? So, the purpose of circumstances is to make you connect to God through prayer. Ask Him. Inquire of Him. Pray over it. Pray over the situation. Not necessarily to come out of it. But for His will to be fulfilled, to lead you where he wants you to be. Are you there? The God of the day is the God of the night. In the valleys, in the mountains, see the same God. Are you there? God will use your circumstances to watch you like he's testing and trying you to see whether truly you're deserving. Are you there? You don't necessarily pray. God, remove me out of this. Pray for his will to be fulfilled in that situation. My master Jesus prayed, Father, if possible, take this cup away from me. I know all things are possible. My spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. Father, if possible, take this cup away from me. My spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. Let your will be done, you know. God sent an angel. But he did remove him from the situation because he was supposed to go through it to get a place of glory. There are some situations you go through that will help you to get to higher position. I hey, it may sound painful, but don't live for yourself. When you get to know God has a hand in it. Smile. Are you there? You may pray for something and you're not seeing results. You're praying and nothing is changing. Now change your mind. Say, why well, is not going away? I've repented. I've done this. I've done everything. But I'm fighting to remove the circumstances from me. I'm not asking God to fulfill his will. You are asking him to remove it. But not ask his will to be fulfilled through the circumstances. So you're putting a delay. He's waiting for you to understand things real well. He's as waiting for you to come from the position of humanity and going to the gap between humanity and divinity and then get the right answer. Don't say God is not answering. God is not doing it. No, he's watching you real well. Say, he's watching me. Say, neighbor, God is watching you. God is watching me. Watching me real well, well, well. He's watching me. Watching me real well. God is watching me. Watching me real well. Real well, well, well. He's watching me for my good. He knows everything. But he wants you to always be ready for his will. It may be a little painful, but sometimes and most times pain pays. Go through a little pain 
and then you get well paid. You wake up in the morning, you go and work. The whole day you're straightening. Get some money and pull your pockets. In the evening, you go back. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> you go back when you're big. <laughs> you move in the morning, you're hurrying as if you're, your hands are swinging, you're swinging your hands. So fast. In the evening, you pocket your hands real well. <laughs> you go holding your money in your hands. So friends, as I conclude, telling you that circumstance prone, God will use them even when you don't understand. Your circumstance will help you to know who are your real true friends. How should you relate with others? Your circumstance will know, make you know. How to handle things when you get to the victory? When on the throne, you know what it means when someone tells you Christ went through suffering, hatred, rejection, all pains, he saw it. So that when he's on the throne and you say, Lord Jesus, you will feel compassionate. He knows what you're talking about. So your circumstances will upon you that when you get on the throne, you have great understanding. You have knowledge. But if you rebel against the most high God, he will consider you as a witch. Rebellion before God is witchcraft. If you rebel, say this witch. Go to the book of uh, First Samuel, chapter fifteen. First Samuel, chapter fifteen. Go to verse twenty-three. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Are you there? It's saying rebellion is like sin, sin of witchcraft. It's as the sin of witchcraft. It's putting things before you. But you're saying, ah, be the things of God. I give up. It means you put an end to your purpose. Be the things, the situation I'm in. Ah, me, I give up. It means your purpose has come to an end. And God will say now, this is a witch. Waiting to burn. Are you there? You go through situations. You begin passing judgments. Grumbling. Complaining. Abusing. Fighting. Says now look at this one. This is not the intention of the whole thing. The intention is to make you better. Not to do the things you're doing now. Are you there? Your circumstances may be painful now, but I'm meant to make you better. But whenever you rebel and turn off the Lord, you are looked at as a witch. And at that point, your purpose is at standstill. And if you delay to turn back on the vine, you lose it permanently. Say, neighbor, when you rebel against the Lord, you lose your purpose. Jesus, allow your will to be done in my life. 
Righteous Jesus, let your will be fulfilled through my circumstances 